All right, continuing to play Blitz, just went three for five and played two great Caro Cans and three other not so good games. Uh, so let's keep up the pattern and hope for some more Caros. Maybe we won't try to play slot structures though. Though I uh, can't claim that was my uh, that was my mistake last video. All right, let's play. Nah, I've been having so much fun in the advance. So my idea here is knight f3 and bishop d3, and then I often look to sneak in d takes c5s, because I think a lot of black players don't quite have their repertoire tight and don't take on d4 when they should. So black should take on d4 here. Yeah, they didn't. And now I think I win useful expansion on the queen side. I don't know if I have to go b4 immediately. I probably don't. But the bishop on b6, not such a great piece. Um, Maybe knight a3, about knight b5 to d6. Okay, let's defend with the pawn. We usually have enough to defend it, not too worried. Knight b5 to d6. Hmm. Maybe knight b5, a6, knight d6, rook c7, and then they play f6 soon. The other idea is knight c2 to d4. I was hoping they'd waste some time... We'll just play rook e1, that seems useful. With a6 before I'd go knight c2. Because knight b5 feels like a threat. Huh. Okay, I still don't think I have a problem defending my pawn. But let's play knight b5, but maybe heading to d4 once I chase the bishop. Maybe play bishop b2. Because I can't defend on f4. Ah, but that allows knight f4. I was thinking h4, h5 to pester it, but I only have one defender at the moment, and they have two attackers. g3 feels a little slow, but might not be crazy, because it means my bishop is free to go this way, and I support h4, h5, and the knight looks awkward. Did I just blunder this? I can take... Hmm. Bishop b5, okay, bishop e5. I can take on g6, though. They take on b5. I take on e5. Or I take on h7, then e5. Okay, this way. I can take on e5. They take b5. Huh. Alright, guess I don't see much choice here. My hope in this position, I guess, is like a quick rook e3, h3. What to do with my bishop? Three e3. Go e3. Try to sit the bishop on d4. Don't want to ever allow them e5. Then my bishop's going to be real strong on this diagonal. Okay. How are you intending to meet bishop d4? If queen f6, I might take, 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 and then try to play for like some cheapo mate. But that actually might be pretty hard for them to stop. Because the bishop's quite good on f6. Do I have anything better? I can also move the queen wherever I want to, but I don't see a way to attack something useful. So I'll just take. If a, b, 4, maybe just rook c3. Rook e3. Then they might have to go for something like rook c3. Or g5. But in that case, I have ample time to take here. I bet they play rook c3 here. Yeah. Not bishop c4, probably. And I don't think I want to give them b5. I'm going to play a4. If rook a8, I think rook b1. Nope, I have back rank issues. So maybe rook c1. Just making sure they don't have b5. I want them tied to this a6 pawn, so I'd probably like to play a5 and some rook to b1, and force if I can force bishop a6, I was hoping that makes their bishop a bit more passive. Um, maybe f4, prevent e5, don't let the pawns get rolling. Okay, they had an idea too. I guess I can just hit the bishop though. I'm going to get b6 in exchange. They have a pawn for the exchange, or b7, I meant. Um, but now I think they have to play rook a4. 
Sorry, uh, yeah, rook a4. And that takes, takes rook b3, rook a1. That wasn't an option. Um, to avoid time, time scramble problems, just going to put my rook on a light square. Uh, but I want at least one pawn on a light square, because I can easily defend that with my king, but I want to control some light squares. I threaten g5. I'm not sure about this, because I give them a e5. That they play... Okay, I think that was better than d3. Because they keep more attention alive. I'm going to throw in a check. Try to drive their king back while I have this pawn blockade. Maybe come to f6. Okay, my king now is their pawns covered. I threaten rook f3. Let's try to force them to f3. Okay, if they didn't oblige. So maybe h5, h6. Alright, where do they go? They get Zugzwang? No, but this looks good enough. Yeah. Okay. Alright, interesting game. Okay, we'll uh, give a rematch. Um, one for one. Ah, Karakan time. Never has someone been so excited to play the Karakan. And I'm actually getting the line I want. Amazing. I keep, you know, the exchange and the advance against the Karakan are both, you know, very reasonable lines for white. And very frequent at the club level. Okay. So we're going to go for this Bishop d6, Castles, Rook e8. Are we going to see another queen c2? So people know a bit about this. They know they can uh, disrupt my pawns. And I can go for this h5 push. Um, h6, g6, and king h8 are older moves. But h5 gains some kind of useful space on the king side, and white doesn't have a comfortable way to exploit it. So last time I had this, my opponent played bishop e3. Okay, this time bishop d2. So I guess the knight comes to f8 first, and then I can engage in other operations. And again, I'm seeing this g, uh, h4, which I don't really get. So I'll play... I'll start my queenside expansion. Um, then I can take... This is just exactly a mirror of the last game. And then I played a5 before queen b5, so that I could meet b3 with a4. They played f3 here last time. Yeah. <laughs> It's just the same game. Maybe, maybe this uh, this position is just a really likely position on like move eighteen. And here I had knight g six with the point that they can't take twice because a two hangs. Pretty crazy that I have now played three games in this opening in my life and twice have reached the same position on move eighteen. All right. So I can play f five and try to shut things down over here. Yeah, make it really hard for them to do anything on the king side. Then maybe a rookie 7 and rookie 8, like I did last time. But amazing, first diversion from last game on move 19. I think I just have a kind of nice bind here. Like, the rook's tied to h4, and again, they make this weakness where they just give me these squares. Oops. All right, I'm going to double. This position, this this opening might just be really hard for white to play in a lot of lines. So they have to stay on the h4 pawn. I get first access to double on the file. I think I can just play f6. Um, all right, bishop f7 probably isn't good. Bishop f7, bishop f5, rook e1, rook e1, rook e or maybe just bishop e1, and I don't get h4. Hmm. So how to improve my position. King f7 often walks into bishop g6 hitting things later. I guess I'll bring my king off a light square, though. That seems a slight improvement, and I don't know what white's going to do. Ah, white has plans. Okay. 
This was a good move. I totally missed this. I assumed they were uh, tied down. And they were not. Ooh. Now oh, it's tricky. Okay. I'm going to play knight h8 to not have this be uh, forking my pieces. My knight sort of has a path back into the game. f3 is hanging. I probably have to play bishop g8 if they take. Their queen's still tied to this square and always will be. So that's, I think, a useful trump for me in the position. Ooh. But I, I definitely blew this. Um, maybe knight f7 to d6 is going to be strong, though. Okay. Let's keep my queen eyeing this useful square and defending c6. They have dreams, too. Okay. I want to come to d6. Again, they have ideas, too. go quickly. Doesn't do anything. Right. Let's get the knight out of the way, just for a moment. Defend c6. Ah, blundered this. Okay. Um, the third game has not been such a shining, glorious position for the, uh, the Karakan. Though I still don't think, like, my position super resigns. They're gonna delay taking, that's smart. Um, I'll force the action. If I can get in... I wish my king was on f8, though. That was clever of them. Um, okay, their bishop is pinned. I still have potential sneak-in possibilities. Um, on kind of b3-type squares. If I can keep them tied down... If I can get my knight active... With us both low on time. Right. How do they defend a3? They don't. All right. I'm scared, though. Right. It's not allowed checks. Okay. Centralize my bishop. Allowed a check. Yeah. Fair point. Um, okay. Run with the king. Maybe take on f3. Then I have a check on f4. Okay, um, all right, I do want to look at these two games, so I'm going to stop there, even though it feels bad to uh, leave someone on a, uh, a clocking when I was clearly uh, lost, unless I was lucky enough to have a perpetual, which I actually was here. Because um, once again, once they open the pawns this much, just there's always possibility to infiltrate. That's interesting. Okay, but let's go back. So we got very similar position, except with bishop d2 instead of bishop e3. Again, went for b5. Again, took on f4. Now we have exactly the same position. Played a5, played queen d5, played a4, knight g6, bishop c1. So this opponent played it better, and I played f5. Which makes sense. a3, I do not like. And now, okay, this is interesting. So, I had problems with this knight, right? Because there was sort of this pin here sometimes. They never really had it until they got in g4. But then there was a real problem on the square, and especially once I played f6. So actually, my knight has done decent work, and I should be willing to perhaps find another way into the game. Where do we go from knight e7, I wonder? To knight e5 often. Interesting. Okay. But repositioning the knight. And that makes sense, actually, that queen d7 is actually a move. I threaten bishop b3, but I also open up the square. Okay. Rook e7, not so bad. Ah, queen a2 check, because e1 is loose. Yeah, this would have been nice. Alright, well, I did get an immediately winning position, I just uh, was not tactically capable. Nice. So, uh, if king c1, yeah, I take on a3. Man, this would have been cool to uncork. Alright, I'm glad I know about that, because apparently you just get this line every game. Bishop g5, f6, bishop d2. 
and here king f8. I just couldn't find an improving move, and I should have accepted. Okay, much like when your knight's on b8, and you're like, I'm just going to bring it to f8. Then I bring it to g6, and just, no, I'll just bring it back to f8. f8's fine. Interesting. Uh, and now g4, I couldn't find anything. I didn't like queen f3, I didn't like taking on g4, so I just accepted I'm down a pawn and hoped I had compensation on this wonderful light diagonal. But then they played uh, much better than I did. And I didn't want bishop d5 because I was trying to keep my strong diagonal for power. But maybe their bishop actually is not doing very much to defend these squares. The key piece, if I ever infiltrate, is going to be my queen. So I shouldn't be so averse to trading this bishop. My bishop's just stuck here, and theirs is, you know, in the center of the board, really dominant. Alright, this blundered bishop d6. And now I am very lost. And then remain very lost. Still very lost. The lostest. Super lost. They should have played rook e8 check, yeah. I just assumed they were going to win the knight. So lost. And now, not lost. Miracle. All right. I think we're uh, two for two. Thanks to the might of the Caro Cam. Oops, three minutes. All right. Uh, let's play F4. I don't think I've played this much uh, on videos, but I used to really like it. Played it a lot as a 1900. This is the Fromm's Gambit. Black's threat is queen h4 g3, and then queen takes or bishop takes g3, h3, bishop g3, mate. So it plays knight f3 to stop this. Now g5 and knight f6 are the main moves. I think knight f6 is a little more venom, and people don't know about it. Knight f6 is a good move. Knight g4 is the main idea, and then there's ideas on the dark squares. This I am not familiar with. I think queen d3 is generally really important, often to support g3, because there are these weird dark square tactics c3, never allow knight b4. I want to play bishop g5, knight d2, and castles queens. I also might want to play e4, but often that's risky. I'm going to pin their knight. I think that's a little bit of an annoying pin for them. And then knight d2. Try to keep every square solid. I'm up a pawn. I have the center. You know, black just has a lot of development. All right, so they're quickly starting their queenside play in case I castle there. I still think I want to castle there. I don't like my king in the center in these lines. Now I can play e4. Think about e5. If a3, b3, and I, you know, they'll need more pawn moves to create a breakthrough there or some kind of peace sacrifice. I threaten e5. I think I've made it through the worst of the opening. I don't want to allow any openings over there of the position. Uh, So I can take on f6, and I might have to take back g, because if they take back queen, I'll have e5, but I think I'm just going to try to play real, real solid chess. Okay. e5, g5, I guess they come into d5. Maybe I want to keep my central pawns together. Maybe they're good together. Let's ask their bishop the question. Because if bishop e6, I have d5. Otherwise, I'd be a little scared, because sometimes like they can take here, and if I have to take back, it gets scary. And my knight's not currently a defender, because it's pinned. Which actually means maybe they can try some kind of g5 and knight e4. Because this knight is pinned, which is one of the defenders of the pawn. Um, I guess I'm hoping for bishop f3, and then I take and defend the pawn. So my pawn is still a problem, potentially. But if I play g4 and they have to play bishop g6, then the knight will remain pinned. But their bishop will be another attacker on my pawn. So am I creating just as many problems as I'm solving? I might be. I don't like how I'm handling this at the moment. Probably going to play, uh, if bishop g6, going to play king b1. Which walks another piece into this diagonal, but gets out of this one. <laughs> And I have uh, created too many problems for myself. Remember, like, 45 seconds ago when I said I feel like I've gotten out of the worst of it? I immediately followed that up by making it a lot worse for myself. 
Alright, so I think I have to take on f6. And now maybe queen c2. Try to play bishop d3 and keep everything pretend under control. Because then I can play, I don't know, something like e5. Okay, I gotta save the knight. Are they gonna sack on d4? I don't think they can. Does this do anything? If I play e5, they take, and then they have knight e5 at the end because of the pin. Some people might think taking this gambit is, accepting this gambit is more trouble than it's worth. Those people have a point. Because even though I think my opponent has misplayed, I am not having an easy game of it. Alright, I'm going to hit their queen a few more times, just I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Okay, still don't have e5. Let's play knight f3, though. Where's their queen going? Alright, now e5 still walks into an eventual pin. Ah, uh -huh, what garbage. Okay. <laughs> Slowly preparing e5, trade off their bishop, free my position. Okay, rook f1. Their queen doesn't have entries. e5. Can we do it? Let's do it. Let's go for it. Have I freed myself? Ah, they think I have. Good. Alright, queen f5. Now if the knight moves, I have threats on f7. Okay, definitely happy to trade queens. Uh, knight h4 to come in, or knight d2 to come into e4? I guess knight d2. They should, they'll probably play c5. Yeah. Um, maybe king c2. Just keep an eye on squares like this. Try to trade something. Man, they got a lot of pressure out of this for a long time. They can take on b3. Okay, now I hit e6. Where's their rook go that keeps the knight defended? There aren't actually that many squares. Because I my pawns can chase. Alright, I cover the check. Right, let's and then start pushing my pawns on the other side of the board. Alright. Move too quickly. But how are you getting your pieces back? Okay. All right. That was generous of them to resign instead of trying to pop me. Okay. We will have to look back at that opening because I should have been able to free myself better than I did. But we are three for three. Let's try to play a tango. Where you go for a quick e5, and the idea is to get the white pawn off this d5 square. My knight's shuttle to the king side, and then my bishop has this like nice square on c5. And all right, if they stop the bishop going to c5, then it goes to b4. There's kind of a priority of squares. I want c5. If I can't get that, I'll take b4. Threaten knight takes e4. Oops, knight takes e4. Uh, one thing to note is I can't play d6 before castling, because they have queen a4 check. That's an easy mistake to make. So I'm just going to castle. Prepare d6. Maybe I should rip on c3 when it's clear it doubles their pawns. Because it can be hard to find play here. Play d6. I will trade for their knight if they make me. And say this is a closed position where it is I'm gonna try to stop their easy expansion. A closed position where the bishops versus the knights shouldn't be too big a deal. Of course, the thing they say about closed positions is, you know, it always opens eventually. Think about h5. Is that is that absurd? Let's go for it. Try to discombobulate the knight a bit. Maybe play knight h5 after. Yeah. Think about f4. Hmm. So 
So queen f6, gh5, queen f3, forks here and here, but I'm losing g6. So if, say, rook f1, queen e3, they take, and I feel I'm just down material there. Um, if I play something like knight f6, I feel they have a free chance to close the game in a favorable way to them. So I'm going to play knight here with the idea of taking back pawn to open up e5 for my knight. Which I think is a nice square. Okay, this is just a blunder. Okay, I want to go back to the previous game, though, because I think that was a little more interesting. So, I like knight f6, and normally here, knight g4 is played, as far as I knew. Apparently castles is interesting, because knight g4, if white doesn't know about queen d3 and makes some kind of, like, normal move, there's all kinds of tricks on h2. Like, bishop h2, and if knight h2... Then queen h4 check, and they get h2 back. And just usually black has these kind of, one of the pieces can take on h2, often both. And it's quite dangerous for white. So white plays queen d3. And the point is, now with bishop h2, knight h2, queen h4, there's g3. And because the queen's hit, black doesn't have time to take the knight. So queen d3 is this odd defensive move controlling g3. So in the game, I decided to play queen d3 anyway because I feel more comfortable with the queen on d3. But here, actually, there isn't threats like that, and I should just make a useful developing move. Interesting. So I played c3, which is fine. And then bishop g5, knight bd2. This all made sense. Castle queenside. I think this was around when I thought I was doing fine. And I was doing fine. And around now, I think we made, I made a lot of errors. So bishop h4 is fine. For key one, yeah, that is a way to defend the pawn. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, just did not consider it in the slightest. And then I drove the bishop instead to its best square. And now I am lost. Ooh, knight takes e4. The point of bishop takes d8, and now they have these discoveries that grab my queen. So knight c3. If king c2, then I open up other knight b4s later, even if not immediately. Wow, if king c2, yeah, just knight a2. They don't even have to uh, take yet, because I'm pinned. Or knight d1. Yeah, so, uh, <coughs> got myself in tons of trouble here. Um, now, slowly, slowly unraveled. But my position now is okay. Okay, interesting. Alright, so I didn't see this rookie one idea, and I drove their bishop from g4 to a much better square in g6, showing a complete lack of understanding. I think we're four for five, so let's see if I can get a perfect session. Inspired, of course, by the mighty Karakan. Okay, let's, uh, let's try for a Slav-type thing again. Okay, exchange Karakan with, um with a fianchetto, I don't think is supposed to be great for white. I'd play d3 instead of d4 if I was them. I think they want to play against my center with an eventual e4 break. And so d3, if d4, I think they're just kind of a little awkwardly placed. Maybe they have queen b3 now. And I'm a little awkwardly placed. But not too bad. All right, now I can just castle. I don't mind the pawn taking here. I'll just push it with c5 next turn. Or do I want to play a5? a5 might be the better way, because the c-pawn controls the advance. Well, if I played c5, they'd have the option to advance. I guess queen takes, maybe rook b8 coming. Just try to play on my two open files, treat it like a very, very strange benko. What about queen a7? Keeping d4 is a conceivable possibility. I'm probably playing c5 next anyway now. Because there aren't really targets on the b file anymore of too much importance. If knight d2, I do not think I want to walk into a pin. They just, you know, attack the pinned piece. But maybe play for kind of c5, c4, supported by rook c8. Oh, okay, they're going for it. 
Wow. Okay. I don't see it, and I try not to be afraid of ghosts. If bishop e4, they might have bishop f6, so I'm going to take knight, hit their bishop. If bishop d4, do I want to come to d7? I think so. My queen's not defended, so it feels a little loose, but I want to be able to trade queens if their bishop's driven away, because I am up a pawn after all. And the other consideration is usually king safety. I think both our kings are quite safe. Okay, so they'll just trade off. I'm happy with that. Do I not grab a second pawn? They get this one back. Okay, grab one pawn. I'm going to take... Do they grab a second pawn? Or do I get rook c8 at the end? Not clear. Or sorry, do they get the, a pawn back? Bishop c6, rook d8. Because I have bishop f8, so I don't have these back rank problems necessarily. So maybe they can't take. Right. I would like to move my bishop to a stable square. E7. So if rook a7, okay. is their point rook a8? I am just up a pawn though. I'm going to play f6 and king f7. I was thinking about bishop f6, but I do want to push my pawns, and doubled pawns are difficult to push. Maybe I should have inserted bishop c5 check, but like, does it actually do anything? I don't really know. Um, I'm going to start by pushing my less central pawns, because I don't know how I deal with a bishop d5 check if I play e5. I'm going to start by pushing these, try to trade my g pawn for their f pawn to create a passer. Right. Pass a turn, always give them chances to screw up. If I can play h4, I can play g4. I think I like g4. Now that their bishop's not on this diagonal, I have bishop e4 if the f pawn moves. And that might be annoying for them to face, because their king might be driven to an awkward square. I don't know if I'm making progress, because every pawn trade brings them closer to the draw. All right. Now their king has no moves. Does that get me anywhere? Not sure, but... Not sure it doesn't get me somewhere. Maybe bishop f3. Alright, I want to create a passed pawn, so I would like to build for e5, I think. So I need to create the passed pawn at some point. I'm going to take pawn, because I do want the passed pawn. Okay. Now they get first access to controlling the square in front of it, which is a fair point. My king doesn't really have an approach, so maybe I'll try to come to c6 to support bishop c5. This bishop keeps everything under control. I think they should have started rushing their king over to get in defensive position. Because if their king gets to e3, even if we trade bishops, uh, they can just shuttle their other bishop around forever. Does this let me get first access, though? Because now their king can never get to e3. They should have played king g1 at some point. So if king g1, now I get the pawn to e3. And they have trouble contesting that. Maybe their claim is this doesn't matter. Not making progress. I'm going to come to d3. And I guess put the pawn here. Okay. Ah, that's a stalemate. That's clever. Uh, should have been trying to clock them. Okay. Uh, four and a half out of five. They deserved that. I uh, had not found a breakthrough. Um, I felt like this should be a win, but I couldn't find it, and it is a draw. So they deserve to hold the draw. Nice finish by them. A uh, clever way to get it with no time on the clock. And actually, they are winning, despite not getting their king close enough. Ah, okay. Thought I had nice winning chances here. 
but I guess I don't actually have a way to approach, and I can't trade. Interesting. So they find a nice blockade. I still think they should have played at King G1 sooner than they did. Did I have something better here? Did I take back Bishop? No. Huh. Ah, interesting. Nicely played by them. Um, I don't think this opening has a lot of venom for white. Exchanging with the bishop here has never made much sense to me. Um, yeah, and around here I should just be better. Ah, uh, it was a lot better here. Okay, so I didn't find my way through this better. Uh, bishop d4. Ah, just c5. Yeah, grab the tempo. Why, why surrender the turn? And e5. Okay, now it doesn't say e5. Alright, rook fd8. Seems reasonable if they take on e4, I take on d4. Okay, uh, four and a half out of five. And I think some pretty interesting games this session.